Broomall, Pennsylvania is noted for its boring sky, which covers the town from one end to the other. Thousands of boring cars pass by each day without stopping. In 1870, a boy by the name of Buddy Broomall stood at this very spot and said, This is Broomall. Somewhere around 1968 or 1969, my brother came home with this, this bombshell, the casing of a bomb. The big the thing was like six feet long. And I said, oh Christ, I gotta do something with that. So uh, I got the idea of chasing this maid with this big dom. I called it King Dong. So I, I painted the thing pink. I painted this bombshell pink, but it was so heavy I had to uh, I had to put a rope around it to hold it as I'm going after the maid. And then in in the uh, film in King Dong, I <laughs> I actually rest the dong on a trash can and wipe my brow because uh, the fucking thing is so heavy. But that was the origin of King Donald. So I'm so I'm making these short films and I didn't I wanted to give it a name and I didn't know I was fiddling around with trying nonsense films no um, uh, anyway I was, I was I was trying to find a title for quite a while. Hey, remember that bowling ball I borrowed? My kid put it in a microwave. I hadn't heard the word moron in decades. I, there used to be a, a, like a series of jokes. What did the moron say? Uh, something about moron jokes. And I hadn't heard the word moron for years and years and years. I was on a golf course and we were on the first tee waiting to, uh, to tee off. And the starter let somebody butt in front of us. So I didn't say anything, but the guy, one of my partners, blew up. He says, how the fuck could you let those people go in front of us, you fucking moron? And when I heard the word moron, I said, I, I said Jesus Christ, that's it. Moron movies. I like the alliteration, M-O, M-O for moron, M-O for movie. But my alliteration of two letters, not just the one. And that's how Moron Movies, the title was born. Um, we read an article about a man in Philadelphia who makes his own movies. And apparently he would make these 8mm home movies and have them transferred to tape. And then I understand he hired a theater or started to show them in a theater in Philadelphia. Uh, these are not normal movies, you understand. Uh, they're short, kind of off-the-wall things, and this man appears, although he's not an actor. He's just a fellow who does this as a hobby. And so we sent away for a few of these, and six of what we're going to show you tonight. But to get you in the right frame of mind for these movies, let me read you a few of the titles of movies we did not select. 
One was called the advantage, uh, advantage of having warts. <laughs> Another use for tough meat. <laughs> and why Jello isn't a good doorstop. <laughs> The fellow's name is Len Sella, C-E-L-L-A, and it became kind of a cult thing in Philadelphia. People would start going down to watch these little, as he called them, moron movies. So keep that in mind as you watch it, and here are a few little bits of moron movies from Len Sella. So I decided, I read a book about El Cordobez. El Cordobez was a matador, kind of a renegade matador, and he was having trouble getting uh, to go in the ring. They wouldn't let him in the ring to do his thing. So he built his own bull ring. I says, that's it. I'll get my own theater. Walk up. So I started shopping around for, uh, for places to rent, and I, there was a second floor of a Lansdowne Theater. There was a bunch of offices, and they were just, hadn't been used in 20 years, and it was a shit house. I mean, just terrible. And I worked for a year uh, renovating that place. But the thrill of my life was after that year, I had a dimmer switch when it was dark in that theater. And I turned that guy, that goddamn dimmer switch up. Woo! Someone else's home movies, and they can be painfully boring. But tonight, Sheila Allen finds a Delaware Valley man whose home movies are anything but boring. If the bug crawls on your salami, don't throw it away. Shuffle it so you can't tell which slice had the bug on it. That was but one of hundreds of film shorts made and produced by Len Sella of Brumall. Films he calls moron movies, although I can't imagine if, why. You're drunk if you throw out the dog and you take the trash for a walk. Len says he started making comedy home movies about any and everything back in 1967. And over the years, they got so many laughs from his friends. Last October, he started showing them publicly in a room above the Lansdowne Theater on Friday and Saturday night. Being in the movie business, but in just about every aspect of it. I've acted and directed and shot the film. And I clean up between shows. And you've been showing those home movies to your family. Sheila Allen, Channel 10 News. He's good. Yeah, he is good. What I did was I remade the best of more movies plus some more new shorts and I made it into one video called Crap for people with piss poor upbringing. One, please. One, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty bucks. Thirty bucks for one person? That's one way to get ahead. The people with no heads get in for nothing? Hey, Siamese, you make a great hat rack. <laughs> the 80-minute version of crap I'm trying to get into the movie theater. I don't know why, but I think it might be harder today than it used to be because a lot of people are worried about plagiarism and you have to have a fucking lawyer for them to even look at it. What a pain in the balls. B-A-L-L-S. Fucking balls. It's very, very hard 
to get anything uh, produced or, or distributed. But I'm not, that's not saying it won't happen. It's going to happen. Somehow, somehow it's going to happen. I love this shit. Well, every, yeah, everything in my apartment was done by me. Uh, I just feel more comfortable, uh, you know, making things. I, I mean, I, to me, uh, any work of art has to be pure. You have to do everything, everything. And my surroundings are, like my apartment is kind of, you know, you're stretching to say it's a work of art, but I, you know, I feel comfortable in things that I created. So every, almost everything in, in my surroundings were done by me. Is that, is that picture of you up on the wall in your living room? Is that you playing God? Yeah, that's God. It's God, but it's also... It's, it's you. Oh yeah, that's me. Ironically, that picture is the best picture of me. And I'm an atheist. <laughs> I'm an atheist. And this picture, I, I, I think I look best as God. What do you think of that shit? Now I still do, I do like, like cartoons, and I, I, I got, I'll get a, an urge to draw once in a while, but mainly I, I want to get, I have a lot of films I want to make. If someone gives you a horseshit painting that they did, have it showing whenever they come to visit, but as soon as they leave, just flip it back to your favorite painting. While I was painting, I would do my creative work and I would just paint for like a couple of months out of the year and then I would go to Europe or the Riviera somewhere and write, well at the time I was writing. I started out as writing novels. And then I bought the camera in 1968. That's when I changed from writing novels to making films. January 12, 1944. My lousy artwork is hanging all over the place. The house looks like shit. I mean, you know, if you're going to get into my my brain, I mean, this fucking thing has been a fucking 10 hour film. You know, it's, you have to have a certain amount of restraint. Where you, there's just, like I say, it's like my brain. My life is like my brain. You know, there's one thing leads to this, that, and the other thing. And it's okay if you start out with that premise, you're going to go any fucking way. But that's not the way this is. This is, this documentary is it's not about my fucking brain. It's a, 
is about a very specific thing that I do. As soon as you see me put the mask on, you're going to zoom in, right? Mm -hmm. You want to do it? And then I get a prop. I'm doing a, I'm doing a uh, spoof of the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And here's, there's Jay. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't fuck around. I'm Jay Leno. What's that? Did you do it? Are you gonna do it again? And this is, I'm, I'm doing a spoof of the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And here's Jay. <laughs> Jay Leno. Uh huh. I don't fuck around. Okay. Is it okay? The older you get, the more, provided your, your arteries are clear to your brain and mine, according to the doctors, are like a baby's. And don't think for one moment that I don't sense jealousy. Like a fucking baby's. So that means the brain is clear. As long as that brain is clear, you're going to get knowledge, more experiences, and they're going to be just, your blood is going to be burgeoning with all kinds of things and the more that's in there the more connections you can make the more so what happens is just one word well that reminds you of this or that or that you just before you know it you're open five or ten different things but on the way there can be some really neat stuff some really neat stuff it's fantastic i'm telling you aging to me is great because the older you get, the more you know, the more you have to work with. Provided, like I say, you're not deteriorating, you're keeping the blood flow, everything's working right, and I do it so far. Then why don't you crawl, sissy? I have been, you fucking foul ball! It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
these are kind of off-the-wall, miniature, I guess, motion pictures made by a fellow in Philadelphia by the name of Len Sella. Maybe I've been here before I've seen this room and I walked the floor I used to live alone before I knew you I've seen your flag on the marble arch Love is not a victory march It's a cold, it's a broken Hallelujah Hallelujah He sent us these little films, and he's not a professional. Actually, I believe he's a he's a house painter, yeah. and he puts these little titles on them. I've done my best. It wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I told the truth. I didn't come here to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I stand before the Lord of Song with nothing on my. That's it.